What are we doing? Cutting seeds. Seeds time. Yeah. <laughs> We're at Wyvale so Garden Centre. So we in our car right now. Uh-huh. And we've come to Wyvale Garden Centre because their seeds are 50p a packet, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just playing my game on Yoshi. So the plan is to um, buy the more expensive varieties of seeds like our um, club root resistant ones and all that from here if we can. So let's go inside and see what we've got. Well a lot of it's been cleared out already. It's plenty of flowers though and I got my Cleo me which I'm happy about. Need to get some bits and bobs don't we? Yeah. Yep. Um, lots of the stuff that we wanted isn't here. There's no club root resistance stuff left which is a shame. There's lots and lots of brassicas but I don't touch them now. You okay? So, <clears throat> yeah. So we need to pick a few flowers, don't we? We are trying some green manures this year. Where's Al gone? Where's he gone? Don't know. Um, there he is. So we've got some green manures. We've got a green manure mixture, which is good for organic matter. Um, adds bulk to the ground because it's a deep rooted one, so it breaks up subsoil. There's my Cleomi. This one revitalizes poor soils and that one fixes nitrogen. And we've got some other bits and bobs, sweet corn and we've chosen some peppers. Are they the most unusual peppers you could come up with? Yeah. They're not going to win any prizes. And you got some more sweet corn. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and we more sweet corn, yes we definitely need more sweet corn. Right, so I'm going to pick a few flowers and then I think we're done. See you in a bit. Alright guys, back in the car. It is really warm today, very overcast, but really humid and muggy. But I've got my elderflower ready for when I finish this. So, what we ended up getting was my Cleomi. None of my seeds germinated this year because they were like the years before seeds and I was really disappointed. So I brought fresh seeds for those. We've got green manure in alfalfa, um, which fixes nitrogen. Um, this one it revitalizes um, soils naturally and improves soil structure. And I've seen this one just left, parts of it left, and the bees absolutely love it. Um, but we really want to improve the soil in our plot this year because it is atrocious. And I've got two bags of this one, um, which adds bulk and organic matter. Um, and this was a deep rooted variety, so it breaks up subsoils. So that was two of those. Then we got. <clears throat> two packets of my favourite tomatoes at the moment which are Tumbling Tom um, two packets of Swift Sweet Corn um, Rue chose a Connie yellow yellow tomatoes, yellow tomatoes. so they're Rue's choice and they are ideal for baskets and containers so actually um, yeah be, they like Tumbling Toms then I expect then I got these ones which are rainbow blend. Now I think it's allotment diggers raves about these and they are quite pricey. They're £3.69 for nice. eight seeds. So that is pricey. Um, but I brought a packet to give them a try, see what they're like. Apparently they're really nice and they can all be different colours all on the same plant. And then I thought I'd try my luck again and get a cauliflower all year round. We'll see how that goes. <coughs> And then these boxes, the RSPB boxes, are £6.95, reduced to 50p. So I got one for flowers for birds and one for uh, flowers for pollinators and beneficial insects. Because um, where we put in our pond, we want um, wildflowers and that around there and to encourage loads of insects in. And that's next to the greenhouse, which can only be a good thing. And we can also sit there and watch them. Um, I know it's a bit of a lazy thing to get a box, but... 50p though, you can't you can't grumble at that, I would never pay that price, never. But those, 50p, that'll do. Right, now we're going to where? Plot? Mm-mm. Oh, the other place. Where? Wilco's. Wilco's, because apparently the Wilco seed sale has started and I didn't get any beans from here and I need my dwarf beans. So off we go. Woo-hoo. You see how happy he is? Mm. Car's been off the road for a week, passed its MOT this morning, the first thing we do, get by seeds. Priorities, yeah? <laughs> See you guys soon. I forgot to say, 
all these seeds, all those that I just showed you, they were just seven pounds. So, what was it? I calculated it all up and they should have cost £46.73. So essentially, near enough, I got £40 off for them seeds. So I'm quite pleased. Now that really is it. We're going to Wilco's. See you in a bit. Um, seed sale hasn't started here and they seem to be sporadically starting across the country um, but I'm gonna go grab my beans when they do but I did get myself some um, narcissi some daffodils commonly known as obviously and I've got the mixed pack and they're only £2.50 which I think is a bargain so they'll be going up plop by the fence oh god it's warm right are we ready yeah. yep missus has got a pick a mix is it nice I <laughs> See you at the plot. Back at the plot. Ah, me helps me up. Hey, John. Uh. Time to get some harvesting done, I think. Oh, need to fix that gate. We need to cut the grass. We need to do some weeding. There's so much to do. We'll get there. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some bits and bobs, just some harvesting and that, and then I'm going to walk you through the plans for the plot for next year, because it's going to change quite dramatically. First of all, I'm going to go in the greenhouse. Oh, we've got some new polythene here from my uncle that will just cover it for now. Oh, poorly chillies. Need watering again. Look at these. So many. And these are the ones, if your chilies start going black, don't worry, they go black and then they go red. I don't, it seems odd to me too, but that's what they do. Loads of them everywhere. These big ones are Hungarian hot wax. They're lovely. Oh, you're going to fall, you're going to fall. Sorry, chilli. Uh, there's some more over there too. Right, I'm going to set you down. I'll see you in a bit. Another day, another bean harvest. I always feel like we don't have anything to harvest other than beans and see everyone else's amazing crops and it's like ugh. But for reasons that I haven't explained, we missed out a lot in the middle of the year, about May, June. Um, so the plot isn't as productive as it could be. But it will be better next year. Now my neighbour's here, um, so I'm not going to do the tour today showing you what I'm going to do next year um, we're coming up tomorrow so I'll do it then so I'll do that as a separate video so my French beans are finally producing really nice straight lovely beans still some of them are a bit big but we haven't been up much this week we've got once a couple of runner beans um, the plants at home this is we've got how many uh, 18 plants up here and this is what I get in one go. Um, at home I've got four plants and I get that like virtually every day now. So, And the dwarf beans are slowing down um, but they've put on a new bunch of loads of flowers so we'll have another lot soon. I've just counted up how many chilies we have in fruit and I think we've got way over a hundred. Um, I like chilies but I, I don't like them that much. I think we won't grow as many next year. <laughs> I'll just take, quickly take you outside and show you what Alan and Rue are doing. They brought up some stuff that um, was given to us, some pots and in mini cold frames. Um, as I said in the last little potato reveal that we did, um, the potatoes that we've been getting at home have got a lot of slug damage. Now these ones aren't looking spectacular anyway. Uh, I haven't got blight, but they're certainly not happy. They're very spindly. And these ones were fantastic the lot that we took home but again lots of slug damage so we're taking them up we're going to leave them on the ground to dry for the night and then take them home and store them um next year i think we're going to do more in pots do you think al um to miss the slugs out so oh when you pull that weed 
into the ground that you've just dug, casting loads of seeds fall in. <sighs> I can see where they do no dig now. <laughs> but that plot will be no dig and it's going to be fantastic, I swear. Okay, I'm going to help dig up the rest of these and get them laid out. Rue looks like she's having fun. You having fun, miss? Yeah. Getting mucky? That's what it's all about, isn't it? Um, we had two tomatoes up here. Rue had a tomato plant in this bed. And it had two tomatoes on, but it had blight. We missed them. Um, so that's come out. But there's loads of flowers. Flowers, flowers. We're going to have a little cup flower patch next year. Um, because I want some flowers to take home and I don't like taking them out of a flower bed and leaving a patch. What can I show you? Here we go. Right. Sweet corn. <gasps> Look. It's not ready yet. So what you want to do if you want to test your sweet corn, your tassels need to be dark brown, which these are. But if you peel back the sheaf a little bit, you'll see underneath your hopefully lovely rows of kernels. Now, if I dig my rubby it, it's not dirty, it's just got paint all over it. Nail, in, which is dirty, I know, I know. But, um, yeah, so brown tassels, peel back the sheaf, and then if you put your finger into one of the kernels, like this, see, that liquid has come out clear, which means they're not ripe. But when they're ready, they will have, like, a milky kind of juice come out of them. So a little while to go yet, and we've got quite a few... I cannot wait. We've got a chest freezer now, ready for sweet corn. It's going to be lush. Right, we're done. Before I go, I'll show you the colour on these balotto and get blooming weeds. Okay, right. These balotto beans are such a beautiful bright red and all over the plants, I think we've got nine, eight or nine plants, maybe ten, and there are so many of these bean pods. It is unbelievable, and they keep coming. They just keep coming. There's so many. Um, this plant's dying back. This is a cobra bean, but there's there are different stages now, so you've got like the green, and then the in-between stage, and then at the top, we've still got little babies coming up here, despite them not being picked. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Despite them not being picked, they're still producing baby bilottos, which is wonderful. So these beans um, aren't to grow to plant seed. These beans are grown for us to dry and eat. And I can't wait and store over winter as dry beans in stews and casseroles and curries and all sorts like that. Speaking of beans to dry, these are our pea beans and as you can see the plant now has, has died back and the pods have gone yellow they're starting to feel a bit softer and not as firm and turgid as they was so they started off that green and then they gradually get paler and paler and then they'll go brown and dry but there's plenty of them in here and these pea beans are those little they're called yin yang beans by the people they're um, black and white like a half and half and look really pretty so we've dug up the last of the potatoes we've still got plenty of pots <clears throat> this is the last of the potatoes so as far as i know this is a row of valor we dumped a tub of sarpe mirror at the end to see what the quality of those ones was like compared to in the ground they are much nicer but they are still tiny i mean that was um Three sea potatoes, no, two sea potatoes in a 30 litre pot. I can't say I'll be growing Sarpa Mira again next year. Valor have done considerably better, but um, everything has got these little holes in. Some of them are much worse than others. Um, I did find one that was like decimated by slugs. But to the pink fur, um, these pink fur apple, this is four plants. And um, they have a lot of slug damage. Um, there's one here that's just like... Uh, that's, that's a seed, actually. Chuck that over there. Um, the whole end of it has just been eaten. <laughs> Look at that. That thing there. You, you're going. Um, yeah, they're not nice. 
mean, we'll eat them, but look at it. They're eating a big hole in there. Horrible things. Horrible. That's going on there. Nasty pile. As is that one. Ugh. Okay. Right, I'm going to get rid of this blimmin' slug. Then we're going to... I'm going to leave those there overnight to dry, because we're not going to have any rain. Um, and then we'll come back tomorrow and collect them. But one last thing we're doing before we go is fleecing the leeks. We didn't do it last weekend and I'm hoping not too late. Um, this is to protect against the allium moth. Um, they like to burrow into leeks and um, onions and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> they start coming around in September till about November but because the weather's been a bit odd um, they look like they're around early this season and I think they might have already got in. Um, so, sorry Ru. Um It was really good to see at Hughes Nursery did a video with Charles Downing and they did Dowding? Downing? I'm not exactly sure. They did a video and if you haven't heard of Charles Downing then he's the, um, not the founder of No Dig but he he's like the god of no dig gardening and he's a real inspiration for our new plot um, but he also had his leeks netted so it's nice to know that I didn't have a silly idea and that it might actually protect them so we got massive rolls of fleece at these um, I think they're like 20 meter rolls for 49p last year and we got loads of them so we've got plenty that was before we even had an allotment I knew they'd come in useful you thought I was crazy at the time didn't you yeah. I'm all, yeah, I'm always crazy. Right then, really now, for real, end of the video. So um, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. We love you all for subscribing and commenting and liking and all of that. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. Say bye, Rue.